Hey guys, Helen Hartsmith here again from the Heart of the Witches Path YouTube channel. Hope you're having a good day. I am. Um, I'm, I'm gonna try to bust out a lot of videos this evening. Um, unfortunately, I only, I, last week was kind of off. <laughs> um, I wanted to record a lot of other things, but work was a bit crazy. Um, so, and between work and act after, after school activities, uh, my week was pretty insane last week. So this week it's equally insane at work, but I'm going to try to get a few things recorded tonight. So look for some, what I hope will be interesting content for the week. Okay. So I'm going to start off. If you follow my Instagram, then you will see that I finished a book and it was pretty awesome. And so I wanted to do a review of this book here on the channel so that you could uh, check it out if you're interested. So this is a book review for this book, Icelandic Magic. Practical Secrets of the Northern Grimoires by Stephen E. Flowers, Ph.D. Before I forget to mention it, let me say up front that if you are in any way into Norse magic, Norse pantheon, heathenry, Asatru, then you've probably heard of the name. You may have heard of Stephen Flowers because um, he's done quite an extensive a uh, list of books on different subject matters involving those topics. But he's also known by another name, and that would be Edred Thor Eldred Thorson. And so under that name, he's done numerous books, and I've talked about uh, a couple of his books here on the channel involving runes. And so I didn't know that when I purchased this book, but I was certainly excited to find out about it. And I'm very much interested in checking out more of his body of work. So um, as I said, Stephen E. Flowers is the author of this book. Um, let's talk about some of the specifics of the book. I always try to um, give you some of that information. So this is published by Inner Traditions, which is located in Rochester, Vermont. This book is copyright 2016. And um, portions of this book has were, were based off um, another one of his books. Uh, um, books. So, and, but you can kind of get into that in the bibliography. So it's about, um, 130 ish pages. Um, for a normal person, this might have been a pretty quick read for me who, uh, always seems to have three irons on the fire and 10 books in my bag that I'm trying to read. It took a little longer. So the fact that I finished this rather small book is quite a feat for me. Um, but Holy cow, great content. So um, I thought I would talk about uh, the different, like how, what the approach to the book is, and, and then kind of give you some of my thoughts as I go along. So um, Stephen Flowers starts off by talking about the history of magic in Iceland. And I found this part to be uh, pretty educational because it was something that I hadn't heard or didn't know anything about. So he talked about how um, the grimoires of Iceland have, there's quite a few of them that have actually survived and are in libraries to this day. And that's where he did a vast majority of his research. And so Iceland was actually some might say the least touched or barely touched when it came to the Inquisition times, um, when the Catholic Church came. It, because of the location of Iceland, it was kind of, you know, like the last, the last frontier in Europe kind of a thing. And so there are a lot of the paganism and Norse traditions and stories that survived in Iceland a lot longer than they did in the other Indo-European areas where Norse uh, magic was practiced and where the Norse pantheon was worshipped. So I found that section to be incredibly interesting as a history nut myself. Uh, I thought that was really cool. He then starts talking about the specific books of magic, the grimoires, 
uh, that this work is based on and where they're located and some of the um, the mythology surrounding it and the stories behind it and who the books belong to. So that was all incredibly interesting as well. He goes um, into a very little detail about the uh, the pagan gods and goddesses of the Norse pantheon, um, which is fine because I know quite a bit about that anyhow. And if you're into, if you get to a point where you would buy a book like this, then theoretically you probably know who Odin is and who Frigg is and things like that. So you don't really have to go into a lot of detail, but it was nice that there was a little bit of an overview. Um, he then talks about some specific people that were considered Iceland's magicians and some of the lore that surrounds their history. And of course, some of this history is either very, very small or it's very generalized um, or fragmented. Um, but that was kind of in that was interesting, too, um, to to see what was available out there about these people who these are their grimoires that he's talking about. So that's kind of interesting. He goes into then the ritual and how um, how you use sigils. So this a predominant chunk of this book deals with Norse magic as an Icelandic magic as far as sigil work as the one that you see on the cover here. And he goes into terms and things like that. And I, my Icelandic is not there. That's why I'm not using any of the, any of the words that he uses because I don't want to be super disrespectful and say them incorrectly. Um, but they're in here. So just know that. And if someone is far more, um, linguistically unchallenged <laughs> than me and wants to kind of, you know, give a little how to in how some of these words are pronounced, I would totally dig that. Um, so anyhow, he goes into the ritual and how and the tools and the setup and things like that that you would go through in order to work this sigil magic. And he talks about how um, one of the big keys in using this time, type of sigil magic is that there's a memorization of the sigils. And so I found that to be really interesting. I'm not particularly artistic in any way. My brother definitely got that talent. I'm the writer. He's the artist. And that's, that's okay. We each have our strengths. But um, I found the idea of creating these sigils really, really interesting. So he goes into how you set yourself up, what kind of tools, which are very minimalistic, um, and things like that. So that was kind of cool. He then goes into the last section of the book, deals with the actual workings, the actual sigils, and what and where you would use them for. And uh, do you write a, draw a sigil onto, um, sorry, my coven sisters are going spastic on the messenger again. <laughs> um, he goes into like, what would you draw it on? What would you draw it with? Um, maybe you're not drawing it. Maybe you're using um, spit and things like that. So that was really interesting as well as the actual sigils themselves. And so um, that is like the whole back part of the book. Probably the last, let me see here. Oh, the last, uh, basically 20 pages of the book. Real, and here I'll show you a couple. So these are some of the sigils that he shows. And, and they're grouped together really nicely. So like the first section is about wisdom. The next section deals with, uh, let's see, I'm trying to get to the next section. Deals with power, um, protection. Of course, we always look in for protection stuff because we're protection kind of folks, control, um, prosperity, love, uh, reception of luck and release of blessings. So that's, I, I appreciate that he grouped things together rather than just kind of throwing things mishmashy into it. So that was really interesting. Um, he also shows, um, um, how to use, I believe it's called a Sator square, S-A-T-O-R square in how you can use it with runes. 
And I should point out that in this book, the runes that he uses are the younger Futhark set, which I don't really know. Um, I've spent most of my rune time dealing with the elder Futhark. So now I feel intrigued. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry, you guys. They're going nuts. Um, <laughs> um, so um, I feel um, kind of... Um, I'm, I'm, my curiosity is piqued to look into the younger Futhark because I don't have any knowledge. But here is, so you would use something like this, much like a witch's um, wheel. I generally use a witch's wheel to make my sigils. And if you don't know what that is, then let me know and maybe I'll do a video concerning that. Oh my gosh, I am so sorry. These witches are going spastic. Um, so you would use this to make this kind of a sigil. So <laughs> just saying that, um, so yeah, I thought this book was really interesting. It was a subject that I didn't know anything about and, um, uh, yeah, I, I, I think it's worth, I think it's worth the time and effort to read it. If you're interested in something like this, I am so sorry. <laughs> Thinking about just re-recording this. Oh my gosh. Um, so Let's just talk about brooms and, and get this over and done with. Oh, my goodness. So I would definitely give this a, a very, very solid four out of five brooms. It's not a super large book. And um, so I don't feel that I feel like it covered the subject matter well. But I feel like um, a five really needs to take me, you know, out of the park and, and really kind of propel me into, you know, some awe moments. So it didn't really give me that, but it was definitely very interesting. And I would highly recommend that anyone read this. I'm actually recommending it to a lot of my friends. So um, yeah, it's really interesting. And it definitely has given me food for thought for some other things that I now want to learn more about, such as the Elder Futhark. So there you have it. I think the, the tribe has quieted enough for the moment so that I can uh, wrap this video up. So if you liked this video, then please give it a thumbs up or if you learned something from it, um, I would greatly appreciate that. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. I would love to know if you've read this book and your thoughts about it or if you've read something similar. Um, let's talk about, you know, some other books to read. Like I said, um, Stephen Flowers has many books, um, including quite a few on runes that um, are very interesting. And I would definitely like to check out more of his body of work. So have you read anything by him that you would suggest? Uh, put that in the the comments below. You can always email me at heartofthewitchespath at yahoo.com and please be sure to check out the Instagram which is Heart of the Witches Path. Thanks for watching and thanks for walking the path for a little while with me. Until next time, blessed be.